What do you think then is behind this early 2022 crash? I think that um, there's a lot of dynamics here. If you look at the entire uh, crypto ecosystem, you have a, a, a set of regulatory uncertainty, especially regulatory uncertainty around stable coins and crypto tokens uh, and whether or not they're securities. And that creates a little bit of, of un anxiety. You have a lot of leverage offshore, right? You have a lot of crypto exchanges that can trade with up to 20x leverage. And those crypto exchanges have many, many tokens that are cross collateralized. And between them and the DeFi exchanges, you can get much higher than 20x leverage. So that's the second source of volatility. The crypto markets are almost designed to encourage volatility. And that creates kind of a love-hate relationship between the, the crypto ecosystem and the Bitcoin hodlers. The Bitcoin hodlers are holding for, you know, a decade, you know, and, and sometimes for a hundred years and sometimes for a thousand years. And yet you've got fast money hedge funds that have a tax incentive, a huge amount of leverage and massive volatility. But you have two totally different investment mentalities here. And uh, when they come together, the result is you've got, in my opinion, the world's least risky asset to hold over the next century called Bitcoin. And you've got the world's most volatile fast money market called crypto. And they're both conjoined, joined at the hip for better or for worse in the year 2022. So clearly you're a hodler. But for the people who are terrified, who have never been on this roller coaster before, Shorter term, what does the trajectory of Bitcoin look like to you this year? I, I feel like it's consolidating at this level. This is a great entry point for institutional investors. I talk to high net worth individuals, family offices, public company executives, private company owners, and they watch Bitcoin run up in 2021. And there are a lot of people that would be afraid to own it if it was going up 400% a year. But if they're staring at it and it's 40% off the all time high and it's consolidating and they see that it's being embraced by people like Bill Miller, by very well respected investors, it's being embraced by the regulators, it's being embraced by senators and congressmen and public investors and public companies. They're looking at this as like a good entry point. What's really going on here at a macro level is Inflation, the CPI headline inflation is 7%. Look at the Turkish Lira, it's collapsing. The peso is collapsing. So there's a volatility story for a conventional investor in Manhattan that's got a portfolio of equities. But 75% of the world can't buy the S&P index. They're in Africa, Asia, South America. And if they've got their assets in banks, they're going to have them seized. They can't buy the equity. So the real story here is digital property that solves a problem that 8 billion people face. The big question is then, are you going to buy more? Yes or no? Yeah, we're going to buy more. Our, you know, we're, we're buying more with our cash flows. We've adopted a Bitcoin standard, Emily. That means that when we generate cash, we sweep it into Bitcoin. We've been generating, you know, anywhere from 70 to $100 million of cash flow. But we will also uh, buy Bitcoin with debt. We bought Bitcoin with $1.7 billion worth of convertible debt. Uh, we bought Bitcoin with a $500 million senior secured note that we pay six and an eight percent interest on. We also issued a billion dollars worth of equity at the market and we converted it all into Bitcoin. What I learned is laser focus. Stuff takes time. I'm comfortable with us working through this year over year. I don't, I don't need instant overnight success. What kind of regulation are you anticipating? Which way do you think the Washington winds are blowing? There's a, a, a profound shared appreciation that uh, digital assets are the future of the financial industry and the United States needs to lead. And I've been pretty impressed at the support in the Senate and Congress from the administration and from regulators all around the world for this entire crypto economy. And in the use case as digital property, I think that uh, the regulatory treatment is pretty clear. If you sell it at a profit, you'll owe capital gains on it, just like if you sold any other property. With regard to 
the cryptocurrencies, the stable coins like Tether and Circle, they're going to be regulated as currencies. Clearly, the administration wants to see FDIC approved and insured banks issue them. So I think that, uh, that we're going to see uh, the banking sector enter into the stable coin market. Um, I think that many other cryptos are deemed as securities and will be deemed as securities and they're going to be regulated as securities. I think that the marketplace is waiting to see what those expectations will be. And, and I think it's pretty clear that um, the writing is on the wall with regard to crypto exchanges, right? The SEC wants them to be to abide by the principles and the rules of national securities exchanges. And they've said that in the spot ETF denial letter that they wrote on, and on several occasions. So I think the regulation is coming to the exchanges. I think regulation is coming to the crypto security tokens. I think it's, I think that with regard to stable coins, this is going to be a good thing. Right now, the, the stable coin market is maybe $170 billion all in. It's grown dramatically, but the truth is there's a demand for trillions of dollars of U.S. dollar stable coins. And the reason that that entire market hasn't grown by an order of magnitude is because companies like Amazon and Microsoft and government agencies aren't going to move billions of dollars of stable coins around unless they feel comfortable that Treasury and the administration endorses them. And when we see FDIC approved banks, when you see a JP Morgan issue a stable coin, you may see a trillion dollars worth of that. This is a rotation from an entrepreneurial driven industry to an institutionally driven industry. And we're sitting at this point where we're crossing the chasm. And the question is, which, in, which entrepreneurs will be institutionalized and come public and, and get the appropriate regulatory licenses? Which existing institutions will choose to enter the market? Which banks, like the Silvergate banks of the world, will enter the market? There will be a shakeout, and obviously 6,500 crypto currencies are not going to be around here in a decade. You're going to see many of these things go away as the industry shakes out and as it matures. Want to do some rapid fire questions here, just looking for quick, short answers. Top three tips for people who want to get into crypto but don't know where to start. You, you know, you should educate yourself first and, uh, and you shouldn't really do anything and until you have a firm conviction. Then uh, do your diligence, be very uh, thoughtful about which uh, vendors that you work with and, and uh, how you move forward. And then third, take a long, uh, a long time horizon. Bitcoin is digital property, digital energy or digital gold. You have to pick one. Bitcoin is digital energy, and it is the future of the internet. Web 2.0 or 3.0, what do you think? I think, uh, you know, they're all marketing phrases. If you actually put a layer of digital energy, or in this case, wrap Satoshis around your persona as you navigate through cyberspace, you can completely eliminate all the things that plague us in the internet. The next internet, the next version of the internet, is a layer of digital energy wrapped around digital information.